Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and I would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So I'll put you the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Sava, and today we are going to investigate the application of quantile regression in EVUs 12. Our data set is 141 companies, and we've got their weighted average cost of capital, log of market cap, log of size, leverage, and a dividend payer dummy equal to one if the company pays dividends and zero if they do not. And uh, we might want to estimate the relationship between WAC and the three independent variables that we've got. And uh, obviously, the baseline model can always be referred to as OLS. And obviously, the baseline model is OLS, as usual. So we just estimate an equation regressing WAC onto leverage, log of size, and the dividend payer dummy. And here we can see that in terms of the conditional mean equation, and that's what OLS regression does, it uh, describes the conditional mean of the dependent variable, leverage in this regard, uh, in terms of the independent variables. So average WAC, average cost of capital, is 9.2 plus the coefficient of leverage times leverage, plus the coefficient of log size times log size, and plus the coefficient of the dividend payer dummy times the dividend payer dummy. However, it might be useful to also think of a regression modeling in terms of conditional medians. One of the reasons is outliers. Sometimes, due to the fact that ordinary least squares minimizes some of squared deviations, you can have a couple of outliers that would impact the coefficients and the estimated model quite substantially. Whereas if you try to minimize absolute deviation, this effect of outliers would be less pronounced. That's what quantile regression uh, does. Furthermore, quantile regression allow you to estimate not only the conditional median, uh, but also all conditional quantiles. So we could theoretically be able to model uh, the impact of um, leverage, size, and the dividend policy on WAC for companies with various starting levels of WAC. So basically for companies with low WAC, does leverage play a positive role or negative role? Does paying dividends matter for companies with low WAC, so companies that do not experience any financial distress or for financially distressed companies with high initial levels of WAC? The implementation is very straightforward. We can go estimate and select the QREG specification, which is the quantile regression. And here we need to specify a number of um, starting parameters. First of all, our quantile that we estimate the regression at is 0.5 by default, conditional median. This is a good starting point. And in options, we can choose our covariance calculation method that would result in different standard errors. By default, it's the Huber sandwich covariance estimator, which are standard errors robust to arbitrary heteroscedasticity. However, we can also select just the ordinary standard errors or bootstrap standard errors. We'll be able to see how it affects the results in a second. But perhaps what is most important is the choice of the kernel. By default, it's the Yapanechnikov kernel, which is used to estimate the density function. And it can be illustrated that the Yapanechnikov kernel is the most efficient kernel in estimating density. However, we can choose some of the other less efficient but also frequently used kernels, such as the uniform, triangular, normal, or cosine kernels, and see how it affects the results. So by default, we choose the Huber sandwich covariance and the Yapanechnikov kernel, and we estimate a quantile regression at the conditional median, at the 0.5 quantile. And here we see that the conditional median of WAC is negatively related, and that relationship is significant, to leverage. So the uh, theory of tax shields here is quite uh, relevant, whereas log size and dividend payer dummies do not uh, play a significant role in explaining median WAC. 
and the coefficients for significance can be interpreted in a very standard way. And this is why a quantile regression is a very good robustness check to see whether your results of the OLS regression are affected by outliers or not. And ours are not because the coefficients are of the same sign and significance. They're qualitatively similar, which is a good sign in terms of consistency and robustness of the results. However, we can also estimate a different quantile, let's say 0 0.25. So what happens with reasonably financially uh, sound companies that have got a low wax to start with? Is the relationship still uh, as pronounced? And we can see that the tax shield benefits for companies that uh, have got low wax that are at the 0 0.25 quantile of WAC, for them, the relationship between WAC and leverage is insignificant. However, the relationship between dividend payments and WAC becomes significant, and uh, dividend payments does increase the weighted average cost of capital for these companies quite substantially. If we look at the 0 0.75 quantile, reasonably financially stressed companies with relatively high levels of work, we'll see that for those, the situation is similar uh, as to median companies with a negative and significant relationship between work at the 75th quantile and leverage. Typically, when presenting uh, quantile regression results, you go um, with, a reasonable, uh, with reasonably sparse steps. So 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, would be quite typical. Sometimes you can do a step of 0 0.1, especially if you've got a reasonably large data set. Let's say you start with 0 0.1 quantile and then move 10% at a time, looking at how your coefficients change and how robust the results are, and so on. But as we move back to the 0 0.5, the conditional median quantile, I wanted to show how the coefficient covariance method and the kernel uh, calculation methods can affect the results as well. So if we select ordinary coefficient covariance, our results would be more vulnerable to heteroscedasticity. We see that the coefficient stays the same, but the standard errors change and that reflects uh, in our T stats. So here significance does not change qualitatively. However, the uh, P value for leverage, for example, becomes much lower. Back to Cuba sandwich, we'll see that this p-value is now higher than 1%, whereas it was lower than 1% for ordinary covariance, quite typical for robust standard errors. And if we change the kernel to something, for example, like triangular kernel, we'll see that it also does change the results quite a bit. However, it is, as with any advanced regression technique, uh, advisable to stick with the default provided EVU specifications, because in terms of kernel, that's the most efficient kernel density estimation you could go for in this particular application. And for coefficient covariance method, Cuba sandwich does provide robustness against arbitrary heteroscedasticity. So this would be the baseline result that is quite conventional. And uh, please feel free to use uh, quantile regression in EVUs to um, see whether the results are robust to uh, outliers that would be the comparison of quantile regression at conditional median results uh, to the uh, conventional OLS results, as well as uh, look whether your coefficients uh, stay qualitatively and quantitatively the same across uh, quantiles. Then that uh, would be a very good robustness check for the consistency of your relationship across the distribution of your dependent variable. And that's all there is for the estimation of quantile regression and its interpretation in eViews. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you'd like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider support on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.